Today on Extra Good, it's engine day. We're gonna be giving an update on our 66 pickup truck that we've been working on because it's engine day for that thing too. But in addition to that, we're gonna be playing around with this small block Chevy 350. We're gonna rebuild it. We're gonna take it all the way apart, field strip the thing, inspect it, and then put it back together. We're not doing any crazy hop up parts. We're not really gonna dive deep into it, but we are gonna show you step-by-step step how to take this thing apart and also how to put it back together and also show you some of the tools that you're gonna need to do this as well. And if you're a beginner, this is the perfect video for you. We're not hopping it up to a thousand horsepower because we're some drag racers. We're doing a basic engine teardown and rebuild. There's a lot of stuff that you will learn in this. We've got the pro, Mr. Klein. I am a beginner. I've only rebuilt one engine before and it was by chance it's a small block Chevy. So we'll see how much I remembered. Sounds fun, but you ready to get to work? Let's do it. Let's do it. So what are we doing first, babe? Uh, looks like we're gonna start taking apart the top of the engine, work our way down to the block. Once we get all of the cylinder heads and the valve train out, then we're gonna flip over the engine and we'll start working on the bottom. I get the oil pan off, oil pump, uh, get the rods and pistons out, get the crank out. So we're gonna take this thing all the way apart. So you ready to go? Neat. All right, so pick a wrench and start going. I'll race you. Ah. <laughs> Rubber gloves. They got all caught up on. Yeah, keep all this stuff organized. Helps put it back together. That one I'm gonna need to get. Yeah, so take that. Sometimes this can be really hard. Push rods. Table space is going to become a premium here in a little bit, so I'm going to keep tight. All right, so then what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen up all of the push rods. We don't need to take them all the way off but we just need to loosen them up enough to where we can get these push rods out. And this is where we really wanna be mindful that we, le we lay them out in order. The things that need to be kept in order are push rods, and lifters. lifters, rocker arms. Rocker arms well, we're like, not taking those off. Right, if we did, we'd wanna keep them in order, but what we're gonna do is just loosen them up and leave them on here so we don't have to worry about keeping them in order. And then later in the engine, pistons need to be kept in order. Yes. about building an engine is as a beginner, you don't have to know everything about engines to build an engine. You learn so much by taking things apart. Just being able to see these and visualize these and work with them with your hands really solidifies a lot of that information in your mind. There's a lot of great books, videos like this one, uh, and other resources that you can get if you've never done this before that will really help you step-by-step uh, step, step through whatever type of engine that you're working on. But now be careful with that last one, because once that last bolt comes it's gonna... out, it could slide off. Okay. 
I always like to brace up against it and catch the weight. I was gonna you can set them on the floor. You don't want to ever set the head on this surface. Don't ever lay this down. You can set it back here, back here on its ends, but the flat surface, like you don't want to set it down on that. All right. So I'm gonna set it on the floor just out of the way because it's heavy. So wait that again. This guy? Yeah, you can use it or the big one. Hold that. Then we take the cap. Put the cap back on. Oh, I see. Put the nut just loosely. And we put the nut. Now remember, the engine's upside down. So even though this piston is on your side right now, if it were flipped up correctly, this would be the driver's driver side. side. I'm gonna put this on the driver's side. Okay. That's where he belongs, and that's number one. We're gonna skip this guy. I'm gonna skip him because he's passenger side. I want to get all the driver side out. Is there only one way you can turn the crank? Best to turn it clockwise. Okay. You can turn it both ways. Uh, depends on what you're doing. All right, so I've got him. You don't want it to be perfectly straight up. You want it to be at bottom dead center of the cylinder you're taking out. So you can see that I've got him lined up to where he'll go straight out at an angle. This guy. Go, uh, this park. guy. We're going this guy. Go, uh, this park. guy. Yeah. Down, right? Yeah. Oh. Go. 
Ok. Nice and organized. Everything's coming apart nicely and go back together real smooth too. Now we're gonna take the first we gotta off. remove the timing of the chain. Get these yep. Nine. Half inch. Yep. Second. Well, what we're going to do, hold on, hold on, Let's take these guys, mm -hmm. you work them like that, like this, and you can get the cap on. Oh. Right? Now, this one, I think, I got to do a little different, mm -hmm. but that's the trick. That's how you get the caps on. This one on the end, take the bolts out, mm -hmm. and then you just use your little rubber mallet. Like And then you just use your little rubber mallet with your hand. Alright, and get this guy out of my hands. So I can then, he comes right off. Put the bolts back in. So you're doing these ones, you're going to do your hand so it's easy to do it. Here, let me treat the spots. What am I doing down here? I'm going to try to lift my hot pillows up. I'm just trying to get a hole in it. I think that's easier to do as a one person. Camshaft. Yeah! We just disassembled the small block Chevy and as only my second engine disassembly so far, I have to say it's a lot easier than one might think. You just do one step at a time. It's great to have a master guide along there with you, but really like as long as you have the steps down and some basic hand tools, that's about all you need. Just take your time, keep things in order. That's really the best thing is just to take your time. Um, 
During disassembly, we didn't really use too many exotic tools. It's mostly hand wrenches and basic sockets. Uh, the only thing I think we used that was special was the uh, those spikes that I used to remove the pistons. Um, for reassembly, we're pretty much just gonna do our whole process, but in reverse. So the cam was last out, now the cam is the first one in. We're gonna be putting the crank in and stacking all the parts back in just how we took them out. Um, I will need to use a special tool to install the pistons, but that's really about it. Is there anything, is reassembly more or less just everything in reverse? There's not any special techniques you need to know? Um, you do need to know your torque specifications so you can make sure the bolts are all tightened down precisely. But as far as like, if there's a certain order to remove the bolts, then installing them is just gonna be the reverse of that order. That's, that's pretty much a general industry thing. Um, you really do just do everything in the backwards order. Uh, but at this time, we're actually gonna use a torque wrench to tighten things up and make sure they're the right uh, pressure. But, you know, that's really the only difference, I think, as far as disassembly versus reassembly. And of course, we kept everything in order. They will go back in order. If we were replacing push rods and lifters, obviously uh, that's less of a deal, but we need to really make sure that these go in the same places they came from. Yeah, they've over time developed a wear pattern between whatever they're rubbing against. So to put the part into a wrong spot would give it these conflicting wear patterns that would actually accelerate the amount of wear uh, versus if you put it back exactly where it's supposed to go, it's like it never left. So it continues to wear down at the same like regular rate of wear, not anything It's like if your best friend takes your favorite jeans that you've all form-fitted to your own body and try to wear them it just doesn't work. It doesn't fit quite as well. I always like to say trying to run a marathon with your boots on the wrong feet. Uh, that's going to be exactly what happens to your motor. It, you can, yeah, I can put my left boot on my right I wear a marathon foot. in boots. I can do it. I can put them on wrong, but I'm going to hurt my feet a lot faster. So, you know, just because you can put it in a different spot doesn't mean you should. You generally, with engines, everything goes back exactly where it came from. All right, so we're gonna pop this thing back together. And then we've got the Project F100 recap, update, engine stuff. Engine day. For you next. Engine day. Engine, engine day. day. Engine day. Engine day.